Shalom Chavri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching the Benoon Institute of Biblical Research. I got a letter not long ago from a, a precious brother that wanted me to go a little bit more into the creation of Adam and Eve. He had brought up a very interesting point and uh, where he said, God said it was not good for the man to be alone. And so he was asking the question, how could God made them together as one if God said they weren't to be alone? So I wanted to go back with you on this and kind of lay this out a little bit clearer because it is an incredible, incredible, beautiful mystery of redemption in itself. Now, keep in mind, everything about Yeshua is typed in the natural as well, including the creation of mankind, the way God created us in the very beginning. And I think that might help open up some thoughts there to begin with. Now, before we go to Adam, I want to read to you the first sentence in the, Gen in the Genesis account. Now, in the King James, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In Hebrew, it says, Barashit bara Elohim et hashemaim ve'et ha'aretz. Okay, exactly what it says. In the beginning, or at the first, God created. Now, the key reason I brought this out is because of bara. Bara is the word for create. Okay, just hold that in your mind there, because what we find in Genesis is we find two different accounts where God is speaking of creating the man, and it seems to be just man because, or Adam, because of the name of Adam that you read in, in the English language. Now, of course, in Hebrew, we, the word Adam comes from Adama, which is the ground. It also comes from Dom, which is blood. Uh, but let's look at this a little deeper here. Now, in King James, let me take you to verse 26 here. Let me just scroll this down. I'm using a computer here so I, can, so I don't have two Bibles piled up on each other. It says in King James, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over creeping things that creepeth upon the earth. Well, in King James it says, let them. That's correct. All right? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now, let's take a look at this then. We'll take just some little examples of this from the Hebrew language here, and I'll also read a little bit of the way that we translate this in the Jewish Bible. But the key part here is, Ve'yomer Elohim na'oseh adom belasmenu kidemotenu. All right? And God said, let us make mankind in our own image. See? Uh, that's belasmenu, uh, in our own image. Kidematenu, which is in our likeness, and then veya, uh, excuse me, veyoredu, and that's when he says, and, uh, and let them, all right, and it is in the Hebrew, it is in the plural, uh, be the gat chayom, have the, have the dominion over the fish in the sea. One thing I've always wondered about, how in the world could Adam and Eve have dominion over fish in the sea? It's something that makes you really think for a moment. So, but let's move a little further down because I, I want, and just keep that in mind. How would you have dominion over the fish in the sea? Because you have to remember dominion is to rule, to lead, to, to, to direct and to guide. The relationship that God had uh, with uh, that Adam and Eve had with the creation that God had made was a very deep uh, relationship. They were able to literally lead these animals and, and communicate with them, something that we cannot do today. But the dominion is not like what we might think as far as just you're the boss of them, you know, but in love. 
But how would they have dominion over the fish of the sea? Well, let's look here now. And let's keep, keep in mind, God created them in His own image. God is a spirit, cannot be seen. Is that right? So it looks very interesting here. Now let's, let's look a little further down. And God created mankind in His own image, and in the image of God, He created Him. Male and female created He them. All right, in Hebrew, Ve'yabra Elohim et ha'adam. There's your key right there. Ve'yabra Elohim et ha'adam. And God created the bra, just like He did at the beginning. Be'oshit bra Elohim et ha. Pardon me, I'm, God, my ears are clogged up right now a little bit from sinus trouble. Um, but it's the word created, like at the very beginning of Genesis. Be'oshit bra Elohim et ha'shemayim et ha'aret. See, bra, the word created. Because later you're going to find, a little further down in chapter 2, God forms the man from the dust of the earth. Totally different word. Not created. That's interesting. Even the word make, made them is different than the word formed or created. So in this case here, he says here, See, the man or mankind, Belatsam, Elohim bara oto, he created them. They were both created, not formed, created. In what? In God's own likeness, in God's own image. He said, let us make man in our image. See? And we know that God, in him, is both masculine and feminine. How do we know this? Because if Adam and Eve truly are going to type Christ, Christ was the one that did the creation in the beginning. Is that right? And inside of him was his bride. Now, we as the bride were inside of Christ, but we don't recall it. We don't have any recollection of it. But yet we were in him. And when God created Adam and Eve, man and woman here, He called them Adam, Ha-Adam. See, mankind is the better correction. And even the Jewish Bible, they put mankind. Why? Because the Jewish people know that God created them together at one time. She was there. She was not less. She was not formed as of yet. He was not formed as of yet. I believe they were in a spirit form. Just as at one time, um, our lives were hid in Christ. Now, we know that Yeshua is the tree of life that's spoken about in the Garden of Eden. We know that that life that that tree had would be what we would call the Holy Spirit today. This was the life that He intended to breathe in us when we would be born on this earth. But before he could breathe it into us, it was in him. In other words, what it was in him, we were. What are we? The bride of Christ. What is the bride? It's the feminine characteristic that was in God. It's us. Just like Adam and Eve were together in one unit, they were spiritually bound. I, I was explaining to my wife the other day, it's kind of like this here. I said it was like that spirit of life you know, it's like the, the, the Ish that God called Adam, he just wrapped around the Isha. And they were given dominion over the earth, over the fish of the sea. And it was like a spiritual union, a spiritual creation that God had made. And clearly in Hebrew, the forming and the creation are two different things. So let's look at it a little bit more then, all right? So he created them. He created them male and female, created he them. Okay? And the King James, let me look at this real quick. Let me get there where we are in King James. Uh, and God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, 
male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea. Now see, God is speaking prophetically here to replenish the earth. Because why? God knows they're to, to bring forth more children. But the question is, is how? That's still a mystery. You know, or is he just prophesying because he knows he's going to form them from the dust of the earth, which is what I believe is correct. He's going to form them from the dust of the earth. Now, so we go further down, getting into chapter 2. God brings all the seeds after their own kind. And then we get into chapter 2 of Genesis. And at the very beginning, excuse me, not at the beginning of chapter 2, but at around verse 7, I believe it is. Let's see here. Yes, in verse 7, or is it, yes, verse 7, God says here, let me, let me take it into the King James again. Let's just first read it from there. And I say that because you got to keep in mind, I know sometimes the Hebrew Bible verses don't line up perfectly with the Christian Bible. The, the, the words will still be there. It's just the way it's laid out. Uh, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. All right? Now, let's look at this now. All right? Uh, all right? That right there is the word for formed. And he formed. Yahuwah Elohim et ha'adom afar min ha'adama ipak pa'av nishmar chayim ve'yahi ha'adom le'nefesh chaya. Now, God forms. It has, you know, doesn't say nothing like Bereshit bara, bara created, but now we have yatzer, which is the word for form. Now he forms him. He's literally going to make a body. For what? To put the man in. Now the reason we know Adam and Eve is already created is because of what God does in this verse. Watch what he does. The yatzer, and this is not the right way to say God's name, okay? I'm just using it because it sounds similar to the letters, Yahuwah. Elohim et ha'adam afar min ha'adama. Okay, and God, he forms the man, because that's the first body. And the reason why he's still using ha'adam is because why? Both of them are going to be in the same body as well. Not just have they been created already by spirit, but now they're both going to be in the same human body. All right? All right, afar min ha'adama ipak pa'av, be'a pa'av, excuse me, and God breathes into his nostrils, nishmat chayim. That is God's own life being breathed into there, but it's in a plural. Why is God breathing that life into the body of this mankind, this man? Because God knows that he's already, he's already, He created them in Genesis 1. Male and female, He created them. They were created from the life of God. They were spirit being. They were able to lead the fish in the sea. Now He's going to put them in the same human body. And when He puts them in that body, just like we were put into Christ. Christ has kept, he created us. We were, you know, when you were born on this earth, you know, Paul says, you know, if this early earthly tabernacle be dissolved, I have one waiting already. When do you think that one, that body that you have waiting was created to begin with? When do you think your soul, the, 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 the very essence of who you are was created? Back. All the way back in the very beginning, when the tree of life was in the Garden of Eden, you were part of that tree of life. You were in Christ then. When Christ died on Calvary, your soul was there then.
or spirit, whatever you want to call it, but the life that God had, because you got to remember, this is what the restoration does. This is why Christ come. He come to bring back what was lost. And he restored back what was lost. Now, you can blame whoever you want on this, but Adam was blamed. Eve was to blame as well. Now, Eve, in what she did wrong, she did it in ignorance. And God had to find a woman that would believe him that could bring forth the Savior, and that was Mary. And Mary corrected Eve's mistake, and, and Yeshua had to correct Adam's mistake. Notice what Mary had to do. She just had to believe God unconditionally. What did Adam have to do? Or what did Yeshua have to do? He had to lay down his life and die in order to bring back the life that Adam had forfeited. Now, in both cases, it took Christ's blood to redeem for them both because why? Both man and woman lost the right to the tree of life. Their children were being born and could not receive the Holy Ghost. So anyway, let me get back to this here. My skin's thick on my finger. I've got to bite it to be able to itch it. So, all right. So, um, so God breathes into them the breath of life in a plural form, the chayim. The chay, chay is just God's life. Chayim is God's life in a plural form. And how can God breathe his life in there? It has to be a portion of his life. It has to be the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. What part of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit that makes who you are to unite you with your Creator, which is God. Okay? Now, he breathes in him that breath of life. Now notice, Ha'adam le'nefesh chaya. And the man becomes a living soul. Now it's spoken of in the singular. Why? Because when God first created this body, and for, excuse me, not created, but when God formed this part of the body, Adam, from the dust of the ground, he speaks of it in the singular because why? At this point, now, Eve, who's in the body with him, she's not conscious of what's going on now. That's interesting, isn't it? Uh, and that, this will make you think a lot. I, and, and keep in mind, I don't have all the answers. I'm just trying to show you what I do know. But it makes you wonder, could there have been a time when we were conscious? I, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. But clearly, Adam and Eve were able to rule and had dominion over the fish of the sea, and they were ruling and leading them by a spirit in, in Genesis chapter 1, they were leading by spirit. Just like the Holy Spirit leads you today. They were created in God's image. And God is a spirit. And, and, they gave, and God gave them dominion. That is under the created being. And then God takes that and breathes that into Adam. And when he does, when he puts that life in Adam in the plural form... Because Eve's in there with him. Now she's not conscious, and it's clear of that because now it's the man becomes a living soul singular, no longer in the plural. All right? Now, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and, he, and then he goes and he puts the man there. Now, then we find out that God said it's not good for the man to be alone. Now, that was the question the brother asked. He said, How could it be that God? God would say it's not good for the man to be alone if they were both created equal in the beginning. Well, that's the answer. In the beginning, they were created in a spirit realm. And then when God goes from creation to forming, he forms the first human body and he puts both of them in there. Now, I believe that the man looked everything like a man would look today. Adam looked just like a man would look. But his bride, his wife, the one that he loved, the one that he had the fellowship with at one time in the spirit realm, he doesn't have that fellowship with her. He's alone. God said it's not good for the man to be alone. He says that, verse 18 in chapter 2, it is not good that the man should be alone. Okay? 
ויאמר, יהוא האלוהים, לא טוב היות האדום לבדו. אוקיי? וואי. You know, in order to be lonely, how are you going to be, if, if, if there was no existence of a companion to begin with, you would have no reason to be lonely. But even Christ dealt with this same thing. Do you know how long he waited for redemption to come? Christ was there in the beginning, that fire of God. And in the, in, on the day of Pentecost, we see the fire. This is what they had. They had the fire of God upon them. And God takes from the mean ish, because inside of that fire of God of Adam was isha, the other fire of God. Why? Because he'd already breathed it there in a plural. And now he takes and separates that from Adam, and now God forms a body for Eve. And she's not even called Eve. Adam, even as God said, see, she'll be called woman, and Adam says the same thing. We'll call her Isha. Because he knew she was filled with the Holy Spirit. This was the one that he saw. This is the one that he had fellowship with before. Now, This is also the reason why, and this is just my, me speculating on this to begin with, you know, but when Eve actually is, um, when Satan comes in there and he, he manipulates her, uh, as she says, the, the serpent beguiled me, you know, She did not know what she was doing. She made a mistake in error. You know, for, for, in other words, she sinned unknowingly. You understand what I'm saying? She sinned unknowingly. And I think this has a lot to do with because why? When she was in Adam, maybe, the, maybe the, she didn't know every single thing. Now, she knew what God had said. God definitely had a personal relationship with her. That was obvious because she was able to quote the Word of God. But Adam... was not deceived, the Bible said, and he sinned willfully. And this is why Christ had to come. This is why God had to put off his crown. He was doing the creation in the beginning. He, and he, down through time, he walked with us. He came in, and in, in, he was the one that spoke to Moses at the burning bush as he claimed himself. He was the one that came and spoke to Abraham as he claimed himself. So, anyway, I trust this will be a blessing to you, and I hope it clears up a little bit about that. That's, that's why Adam, uh, the, why the Bible says that Adam was alone. Because when he was put into the flesh, when he was formed into the flesh, and remember, formed and created, two different words all together in Hebrew. But when they were created together in the spirit realm, in the spirit form, That's when they had dominion together. And of course, even when they were put in the flesh here, they were meant to also still rule and reign together. That was still something that should be done. In fact, the only thing that changed this was when the fall comes. And this is when God literally says to Eve, your husband, he said, to shutecha, you will turn to your husband and he will rule over you. Not a divine decree, brothers. It's not a divine decree. This was something that was done totally out of contrary to God's plan because he had already given them dominion together. You know, I, I, I wish Constantine had not destroyed all the writings that were actually there. There's many historical writings to talk about Yeshua and the way he was with the sisters and stuff. Many, many documentations. But a lot of this was destroyed. Constantine, along with his Mithras priests that he was uh, brought together with some of those that had gone wayward uh, from Christianity, as Paul said, they would depart. They would be wolves that would enter in among you. Uh, Paul knew that Constantine, maybe he didn't know who it was going to be, But he knew after his departing, there was going to be grievous wolves that would enter in amongst the flock. And Constantine brought the Mithras priest in to, uh, and, and brought them together with the Christian 
priests that were just really wanting, I guess, popularity, whatever the case may be. They formed together the Catholic Church, and this is why everything went so crazy. This is why every, everything that was biblically sound and done right by the early apostles was no longer being kept. This is where Sabbath went out the door. Ten Commandments basically went out the door. There's a lot of things in the Ten Commandments that we do not keep. Not just Sabbath, there's a lot of things we don't keep. Anyway, God bless you. We love you guys. R remember us. We're, we'll, be move, we'll be coming to a, the United States very soon, um, and we need your help and your support in doing that. It's a major undertaking, and plus we, we, we got, we've gotten our tickets to get there, but we got to still get back home, get back uh, over to Israel uh, before, the, before June ends. So we'll certainly need your help in doing these things. God bless you. We love you, and shalom.